So I was catching up on the latest JP video. We were made in his image. It's Pierce, not Peterson. <laughs> and down on the bottom right of the screen was a video titled Debunked Forever, Climate Change, Global Warming, Climate Crisis. Naturally, I was quite excited because that meant that the overwhelming amount of research and scientific evidence recorded over the last 100 years, all of which points to the same conclusion, has been refuted by one person. It's happened before. It could easily happen again. I wanted to share this magnificent video. Uh, no, this magnificent work of art that cites, oh, that cites no sources. Maybe you just forgot to add them. Not a problem. <laughs> this isn't an academic journal. This is YouTube, after all. I'm sure he'll mention all the academic literature that he debunks in the video itself. I'm not worried at all. It's not like people use misleading clickbait titles to attract viewers. <laughs> no, no, that never happens, right? <laughs> Before we go any further, though, perhaps we should quickly go through the science behind climate change and global warming to define our terms so we all know exactly what the red elephant here will be debunking. Climate change refers to the climate's tendency to change over time. Temperature is one of the largest factors that contributes to this change, and a difference of just a few degrees Celsius can be the difference between something like this and this. There are many factors that affect the Earth's climate, which climatologists, the people who study the Earth's climate, have to consider when doing research. These include, but are not limited to, solar activity, the Earth's orbit, ocean currents, volcanic eruptions, plate tectonics, living things, and of course, humans. We know about this change because of the mountains of evidence from things like ice and sediment core samples to the ratios of oxygen-16 and oxygen-18 isotopes and sediment deposits on the ocean floor, vegetation and the anatomy of animals in the fossil record, pollen analysis which tells us the distribution of different plant species throughout Earth's history, additionally highly accurate thermometers from independent research groups measuring soil and air temperature, glacier melt, and the historical and archaeological evidence which are used to determine recent climate changes to our planet, all of which complement one another like the pieces of a puzzle. It is a fact that our planet's climate changes with time. To deny this would be like denying that the sky is blue or that the earth is round. Global warming refers to the recent warming trend of the earth's average temperature caused by greenhouse gases both directly and indirectly released by humans. As stated earlier, the earth's climate changes for a number of reasons, but none of these factors have changed enough during this time period to account for the spike in global temperatures. This combined with our knowledge of how greenhouse gases affect a planet's climate have led scientists to the conclusion that humans are the primary cause of Earth's rising temps. There are also many spikes in global temperatures in recent history that perfectly match up with events like the Industrial Revolution and World Wars which increase the amount of greenhouse gas being released into our atmosphere. The mechanism behind these greenhouse gases warming our planet is known as the greenhouse effect. Perhaps I should use something that I'm certain everyone is familiar with. Imagine a car on a hot summer's day. As the sun's rays enter through the glass, energy will be absorbed in the car's interior as heat. This heat will naturally radiate off whatever absorbed it, and will eventually return to a stable temperature, but cars, and I'm sure we are all aware, are large sealed boxes which trap heat. Glass and the insulation in the car make it difficult for this heat to leave, like a greenhouse, thus the name. If you're at all skeptical of the greenhouse effect being real, then I encourage you to sit in your car this summer and tell me how long you last. On a global scale, this is essentially what is happening to our planet, except instead of glass, it's greenhouse gas that traps the heat. Our atmosphere has always had some amount of greenhouse gas, which is the reason why our planet is in the same temperature as the moon, even though they are relatively the same distance from the sun. These gases have fluctuated throughout the years, and these fluctuations in gases like CO2 and methane closely correlate with global temperatures. I think that makes sense. Climate crisis most likely refers to the fact that this sudden spike in temperatures is drastically changing the Earth's climate, causing mass extinction, sea level rise, the decrease in freshwater, a higher frequency of unpredictable and powerful weather patterns, a decrease in landmass, the acidification of our oceans, ecological collapse which would permanently change our planet, and long-lasting societal, governmental, economical, and geopolitical effects that have the potential to send us back to the Dark Ages, where all the couch potatoes live in their Nerf worlds and drive their Nerf cars to their Nerf homes where they tune into their Nerf TVs that tell them everything's fine, while whole islands are being washed away from rising seas, species all over the world die off in mass, and extreme weather events become the norm because facing a harsh truth is harder to do than accept a convenient lie will suffer. <sighs> but all of this has happened before. Many times. Right after something like a gigantic meteor strike or a super volcanic eruption, which changes the planet so quickly that species can't adapt and many of them die out, causing mass extinctions similar to the one that wiped out the dinosaurs. But none of this matters, because this guy, Red, can I call you Red? I'm going to call you Red, has single-handedly proven that our planet's climate isn't changing, and never has, and the Earth isn't actually warming, somehow. 
and that we aren't heading towards crisis. In fact, there never has been a crisis, ever, because the Earth's climate doesn't change, and we aren't warming. Let's get into the video. I'm so excited. If this is your first time to this channel and you'd like to see live footage of rallies, riots, and political events all across America, videos of political commentary, and some man- Red, hurry up. I'm getting impatient. Please prove the evidence wrong. Doing so will change the world. I'm just going to skip ahead a bit past your plugging. There we go. Now, to finally debunk this climate change slash global warming slash now it's called climate crisis once and for all. Good. I was starting to worry that this video was just some bait and switch BS where the, in the title you promise one thing but then give another. Now hurry up because you have whole books just about collecting ice core samples to debunk. And based off the length of your video, you weren't going nearly fast enough to debunk one. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm just super excited to learn about the recent advances in climatology. We're actually seeing record snowfalls in a few locations in the country, and it's important to know what Al Gore just tweeted out. He tweeted, Wait, 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 stop. You do understand what causes snowfall, right? Snow is water in a solid state. Now, in order for water to get up into the atmosphere, it needs heat. So based off this, wouldn't it be logical to conclude that an increase in snowfall is a sign of increased temperature? I, you are going to be debunking that, right? That's what you promised. You weren't lying for views, were you? I absolutely hate liars. You know what? We're all human. We all make mistakes. I'll just ignore it because I have a feeling that what's about to come is going to be great. And before you go any further, um, quick question. What does Al Gore, a politician, have to do with climate research and the actual science behind it? It's bitter cold in parts of the U.S., but climate scientist Dr. Michael Mann explains that's exactly what we should expect from this climate crisis. Red, what are you doing? You have literally thousands of papers to debunk. Why are you wasting your time on a single tweet? Why are you wasting your time on a politician's tweet? Hurry up. Let's go ahead and take a look at an article by Charles Onions, I guess that's how you pronounce his last name, uh, from back in 2000, in the year 2000, uh, when this whole climate talk was uh, most popular. Uh, he says, snowfalls are now just a thing of the past. This is back in 2000. Charles Onions is a journalist, not a scientist, a fucking journalist. And I probably should have checked your claim earlier. It's true that snowfall has increased in some places, but snow starts falling later in the winter and starts melting sooner, which is exactly what we should expect to see if the Earth's temperatures were rising. Which you still haven't proven that they aren't. I, I'm starting to get annoyed. I, you know what? Let's move on. So, whenever you talk to people about climate change, global warming, things like that, many people on the left... Wait, say that one more time. People on the left... People on the left? People on the left... Why are you going into politics? You promised to debunk global warming and climate change. You're running out of time. You, you haven't broken down any scientific papers, much less mentioned one. You also have tons of books and meta-analyses that you have yet to dismantle. This issue isn't political. It isn't right or left. It's, it's science. Now, will you please do what you promised and debunk climate change and global warming? take this as the, as the most important issue to them. A lot of people think that this is the most important thing facing the planet today. And I know that I've talked about this subject in parts in one video here, parts in another video there, but I wanted to kind of corral it all into one video and debunk this, like I said, once and for all. So normally they'll bring up the, the saying 97% of climate scientists agree. Now, the moment that I hear that out of someone's mouth who I'm debating on climate change or now let's just call it this climate crisis I usually ask them where does that come from normally they cannot tell me I ask you I ask them where does that saying originate from can you tell me where that saying originates from well it shouldn't matter where it originates from or if it's true or not that's an argumentum ad populum fallacy and is incredibly weak all these people say so therefore it's true what determines something to be true is the evidence so far, all you've done is whine about a tweet and a title published by a journalist. We are two minutes in. <laughs> Make an argument or refute something, for fuck's sakes. But maybe we should break down the consensus, because this has come up. This first paper is from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which analyzed the opinions of 1,372 climate scientists in their publications on anthropogenic or human-caused climate change. 
They found that among the randomly selected researchers, 97 to 98% of them supported the notion of ACC, as defined by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. There is more that they found, and I could go more in depth, but this is all that's relevant. Next paper from Cook J and his team of researchers from the University of Queensland looked at 11,944 papers, and among the ones that directly stated position, 97.2 put humans as the primary cause of the recent warming. Oxy's paper from 2004 found a 100% consensus. Dorn's paper from 2009 found that among researchers who actively published on the subject of climate change, there was a 90% consensus. And among climatologists who actively published papers, there was a 97.4 consensus. Bergen's paper from 2014 found that 90% of climatologists who had published 10 or more peer-reviewed papers related to the climate agreed with the ACC. Here's a paper that goes over all the ones that I just mentioned and more, and concludes that the consensus is somewhere between 90 to 100%. Then there's the American Association for the Advancement of Science, the American Chemical Society, the American Geophysical Union, the American Medical Association, the American Meteorological Society, the American Physical Society, the Geological Society of America, the U.S. National Academy of Sciences, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and this short list of over 200 global scientific organizations that all accept man-made climate change. Now I've linked all of this in the description so you or anyone else who wants to learn about the scientific consensus can easily do so. Don't take my word for it, it's all there for you. But like I said, a consensus amongst people doesn't make something real. That's what evidence is for. Normally, they can't tell me where that saying originates from. So where that 97% claim comes from is 13,000, just above 13,000 peer-reviewed climate documents. So these are documents based on studies of ice core samples. Uh, more particularly, the Vostok ice core samples. You can go ahead and look up the Vostok ice core samples for yourself. If you believe in climate change today and you Google the Vostok ice core samples, V-O-S-T-O-K, you likely will not believe in climate change or climate crisis tomorrow. Okay, let's do that. Here's the CO2 concentration from 400,000 years ago based off the Vostok ice core samples. Now let's compare it to the global temperatures during that time and oh, oh. Wait. You said after looking it up, I wouldn't believe in climate change. That This shows the exact opposite of what you claim. It, it shows that the CO2 concentrations of our atmosphere has a near exact correlation with global climate. It, is this why you didn't show it? Are, or link it in your description? Are, are you intentionally lying here? I took you as an honest guy, Red. I really did. Uh, so these peer-reviewed climate documents, I've already 13, been over this. of them, just... And you can go ahead and look at the carbon emission statements from those particular articles, from those documents that are included in these 13,000 documents that were reviewed by climate scientists to come up with your own opinion. I mean, if you just look at them, the evidence is pretty clear. Which you completely forgot to cite. I looked for these other documents that you speak of, and I couldn't find them. I even looked for them on websites and blogs arguing against global warming and climate change in hopes of finding the source that you may have pulled this from. But I had no luck. Now let's talk about why they are pushing climate change, climate crisis, global warming, uh, and all these different names that they're calling it as the data kind of proves them wrong, they change the name. Alright everyone, that's all I can take. I watched the rest of his video and he never debunks global warming or climate change. For the rest of his video he talks about how green energy companies are paying politicians to affect policy which very well may be true. In the US it's perfectly legal for companies and wealthy elites to use lobbyists to, to basically bribe politicians which I completely agree is wrong and shouldn't be allowed which is the message I'm getting from him. However, he seems to ignore the other half of the story. Big oil and coal companies are doing the same thing, and they have way more power and influence than any solar or wind company, which is with me just assuming that he's correct. There's no way to check the validity of any of his claims because he never cites any sources for them. Now instead of doing his job for him and trying to track down the source of this claim, I'll skip it because it has nothing to do with the mountains of scientific evidence that he has promised to debunk. So there's a few more things that I want to respond to in between his repetitive, incoherent ramblings, and I'll do that now, and then conclude. From 349 to 532, he rambles about how Obama done be conspiring with them solar companies and costing the taxpayer millions. Over the past 
hundred years. Let's just look at the past hundred years. No, let's just look at the past fifty years. Let's take it fifty years. The past fifty years, the climate has only warmed one third of one degree. Incorrect. It's actually 0.8 degrees Celsius, which, if you remember, I explained earlier that just a few degrees is the difference between something like this and this, based off the history of the Earth's climate. Also, why are you bringing this up? I thought you didn't believe in climate change. Now you're saying that the Earth's climate is not only changing, but global temperatures are increasing? The fuck? Now many of you will say, now that's a huge swing. One third of one degree. It sounds small, but it's a huge swing. But let's just look at it with a common sensical perspective. We have only been in industry in this world for about a hundred years. The climate has only changed a third of a degree in the past 50 years. So just look at it like this. Do you believe, ask yourself, do I believe that we completely screwed the planet up in 50 years of industry? Oh yes, that's what the evidence shows. And if you believe that, then again, I refer you to the climate documents, 13,000 of them, all available online. I believe most of them are. I read through, I've read through over 100 of them. I seriously doubt that. Based solely off your video, you seem to have literally no knowledge of climate science, or what the consensus even is. You also frequently misuse words resulting in the symphony of contradictions that is this video. From 6.36 to 10 minutes, he tries to tie his conspiracy theory to illegal immigration somehow. So, I, I'm just going to skip it. I've linked to all the parts that I've skipped, so you can go and watch them in full for context. But I just wanted, pe I just want people to realize that the, the term 97% of scientists agree that climate change is real is not, is taken completely out of context. How stupid can you be? I mean, you could just go to the NASA website for yourself and look, there are reports that say that there is more Antarctic ice in the sea than ever before. How stupid can you be? Okay, Carbonites, I'm going to leave you with some clips that I actually agree with which I'm sure many of you will agree with as well. His heart seems to be in the right place, but I feel he's just trying to pander to his in-group, which is a behavior that is common in all humans. We all try to make our friends and allies like us by saying things that they will agree with. Unfortunately, honesty sometimes requires you to go against the tribe, which very few people are willing to do. Red here is no exception. Red, your video was absolute garbage. The title didn't match the contents in any way. It promised something and failed to provide it. You contradicted yourself multiple times and resorted to fallacious reasoning and conspiracy theories instead of attacking the actual evidence. You made many claims that a simple Google search could debunk. Honestly, Red, if you don't believe in global warming or the greenhouse effect or climate change, then I encourage you to test it out for yourself. When the temperature gets warm in the summer, park your car in the middle of a parking lot on a hot day, fill up a bucket of water, stick it in the back seat, and sit back and take a nice long nap. If you think this is a bad idea, then good. You understand how the greenhouse effect works and how powerful it can be. You have common sense. You understand the mechanism that's driving global warming and causing our climate to change. You've admitted that not only does our climate change and is changing, but that global temperatures are increasing. Yet you say that you don't. You are a beautiful contradiction of a man. I look forward to your reply. Now have a nice day. Now yes, do I believe that we should be researching alternate energy sources uh, like solar and wind and, th and sea energy and things like that, current energy? Yes, I do believe that we should. I just want people to do critical thinking, not just on this solar topic, not just on global warming, not just on any of these different things. I want people to do critical thinking and research for yourself because the information is out there. I completely agree. You first.